Hello Nuggets. So I was toying about whether or not to make a blog about this, but as no one's watching and this is for me, I want to look back on this moment and remember it, because uh, I don't really talk about politics very much, because firstly, in my experience, it's an echo chamber. I'm not just talking about social media, which I don't really do, and I guess this is social media, but this is it, right? I don't do Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or any of that stuff. Um, but um, I know social media is uh, an echo chamber, but I feel that my circuit is an echo chamber because you gravitate towards people who have the same ethics and politics in general than you do. There are people obviously around you that don't have them and you're friends with them. But in my experience, what happens is when you disagree so fundamentally on politics, you just don't talk about them. You know, or, or at least one party will say, I can't do this. <laughs> I love you, so I don't want to do this. You know, I have that situation with my in-laws. You know, we, we can't talk about it, about Trump. But something happened today where Trump apologized for um, fat shaming someone um, in the audience who was protesting him. Right. And. I don't know, it just got me so angry because what upsets me, it's not... I may I may disagree with Trump's policies, policies, I disagreed with Bush's, I disagreed with Clinton's, I disagreed with Obama's, less of Obama's, but I did disagree with, you know, some of his warlike choices that he made. We talk about him like Obama was a saint and he bombed and killed people. You know, it's a modern world, I understand that there are hard decisions to make. But still, I disagree with politics with all of them, right? It's how hateful the man is. And I, that's what I find difficult to understand with people who support him, not Trump supporters, because the phrase Trump supporters has become this kind of catch-all phrase for people that liberals think are just disgusting. It's like how you label someone in a negative light. So I, it's, it's minor, but supporters of Trump to me is less offensive than Trump supporter, because that's an aggressive term. So supporters of Trump, I don't understand how they see past how hateful he is. And I understand that, you know, even if you agree with his policies, even if you think he's making the change, even if you think he's draining the swamp, as it were, and it is a swamp, and I don't think he is, and you maybe you think he is, whatever that is, I just find it so concerning that the man in charge is such a hateful person. He's so aggressive and mean-spirited and the way the way he attacks people to their core is like a high school bully. And I just I, I just expect more from the leader. I do. And I don't know how you look past that and just say, well, all that matters is the policy. I mean, obviously, there are people out there who don't care that he's hateful and they're hateful people. And that, you know, what are you going to do? That's that's who they are. That's they're not going to change. They enjoy the fact that you're upset about that because that's what they that's what they respond to. They respond to people being upset. You know, I have some people I used to work with who during this whole thing were like, I can't wait to see the liberals cry. It's just hateful people. I would never say I can't wait for Trump supporters to rot in hell or whatever. It wouldn't occur to me. But the hate-filled speech, I don't get it. I don't get why that's okay, why people are not upset with this. I mean, let alone the the... the, the the sexual abuse and the and the and the mental abuse and the way that he 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 um, divides us. Apart from that, he's just so hateful towards people. Why doesn't that upset people? That's not politics to me. That's got nothing to do with politics. He just seems like a really hateful person, and I just can't get my head around it. My in-laws, my my mother-in-law and and her boyfriend. Effectively, my father-in-law. I've been together for a while, and you know, he, he. I see him as a father-in-law. I love him to bits. I love them both to bits. Are the most loving, gentle people you could ever meet. I mean, absolutely filled with love. And they're both supporters of Trump. And I understand that they have a different view politically for what they want for the country and the way they think the country should be run. What I don't understand is how the hateful rhetoric that he spews doesn't hurt them, doesn't offend them. I don't get it. I, I have tons of issues with the GOP, with the Republican Party, and I don't, a lot of that I don't understand, so maybe it's just me not understanding. I don't understand how they can see past the corruption that there is 
maybe it's because both parties have corruption. It's rife with it. You know, the whole Hillary Clinton campaign was rife with corruption, you know, and the, and the Democratic Convention was rife with corruption. So I, I, some of it I don't understand. I don't understand why they think it's OK, because they seem such loving people and they seem such, for want of a better term, socialists to me. I feel like they want the best for people. But then they're supporters of Trump. And when Trump gets up and starts picking on someone and saying, talking about how fat they are, you know, and fat shaming happens. I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not holding the banner for we can't speak badly to fat people. If you're overweight, you're going to get abused sometimes. It's just, you know, be less overweight. I'm overweight. But, um, overweight, I'm fat. But um, it's the fact that the president is doing it and that then he apologized to him. When he found out that that person wasn't one of the protesters, it was one of his supporters, that that was the reason he apologized. Oh, I'm sorry, you're one of ours. I wouldn't do that. If you're one of theirs, I would do that. That just seems like a really bad thing for the president, the most important man in the free world to be doing. I I just don't think socially that's acceptable for who we should be as a people, as a race, not just as a country, because we're the most important country in the world. It, It spreads across the globe, right? And, and Obama, you can disagree with his policies, but I look at Obama and, you know, frankly, I look at most presidents, most presidents other than Trump, and Trump is the only one who's pushed this button in me of, that's a hateful person. I may disagree with policies and I may think you're doing things wrong and I may think that you're a bit of a warmonger and that maybe you're corrupt in some way, but the pure hatred that comes out of Trump astonishes me that those loving people that we know in our lives can support him. How that isn't enough to make them say, I can't do it. I can't support him. I'll support one of the other GOP candidates, or Kasevich or whatever his name was, I can't remember, or, or McCain when he was alive, or whoever, whoever it is, you know. I just need to get it out. Because I just, I don't understand it. He's just such a mean, hateful bully. It's so ugly. From the greatest country on earth, it's so, so ugly. And I expect so much higher from the person that we elect to be president. And he's going to win again, you know. I think he is because people in this country are angry and they want change. And they should. The whole fucking system is corrupt. It's absolutely corrupt. There's so much money in politics. And some of the things, despite the ugly way he says it and all that, some of the things that Trump says, like draining the swamp, needs to happen. The swamp needs to be drained. He's not doing it, but... I understand why those words with really frustrated people who have been forgotten about in this country, why it will ring to them and they'll say, I want to follow him. But the people who aren't oppressed and aren't living oppressed lifestyles and don't don't really have to worry about that stuff, the middle class and the upper middle class, people with money, how they can't see what he does and think this is really bad for us as a people. This hate-filled rhetoric, which is just tearing us apart. I don't get it. Anyway, that's it. Sorry if you're watching this and you like Trump. And I hope I didn't offend you. I still love you. <laughs> and I hope we can work it out. And I hope at some point we will get someone in charge who, who's, uh, you know. I hope, put it this way, I hope the GOP gets a candidate that we can all respect. That would be nice. John McCain I respected. I disagree with almost everything he said as well. But I respected him. I really did. So, you know. Uh, I respected George Bush Sr. I probably don't know enough about him. But I did, to some extent, respect him. I respected Ronald Reagan. I couldn't stand him. But I had a certain amount of respect for him. I have no respect for Trump. I have no respect. I couldn't go near the man. He disgusts me. I think he's a turd. And I don't... I just hate thinking of that way of my adopted country. You know? Anyway, that's it. All right, have a good day. Sorry if you switched off at this. Skip to the next one. Pretend that never happened and then we're all good. All right. Spread love, man. Love on it, brothers. Bye. And sisters. Bye. Actually, particularly sisters.